Welcome to an example on how to perform a one-sample hypothesis test with a known population standard deviation. A college football coach records the mean weight that his players can bench press as 275 pounds with a standard deviation of 55 pounds. Three of his players thought that the mean weight was more than that amount. They asked 30 of their teammates for their estimated maximum lift on the bench press exercise. The data ranged from 205 pounds to 385 pounds the actual different weights are shown below with the frequency in parentheses. We are asked to conduct a hypothesis test using a 2.5% level of significance to determine if the bench press mean is more than 275 pounds. So let's first list the given information. The population mean mu is 275 pounds. The population standard deviation is 55 pounds. Because 30 teammates are asked about their estimated maximum lift, n equals 30, the sample size. We don't have the sample mean yet, and alpha, the level of significance, is 0 0.025 as a decimal. Before we find the sample mean, let's talk about the null and alternative hypotheses. The players thought the mean weight was more than the average of 275 pounds, which gives us mu is greater than 275 as the alternative hypothesis, and if mu is not greater than 275 pounds, it will be assumed mu is equal to the given average of 275 pounds, which gives us the null hypothesis. And now let's find the sample mean using the TID4. To do this, we will enter the different data items in L1 and the frequencies in L2, which I've already done to save time. To enter data, press STAT, ENTER, and again I have the data values in L1 and the frequencies in L2. To find the sample mean, we press STAT, Right arrow wants to calculate. Option one, one var stats, press enter. The data list is in L1, enter. The frequency list is in L2, that's correct, enter. Enter on calculate. X bar gives us the mean to one decimal place. We have 286.2. So again, now we know the population mean is 275, the population standard deviation is 55, and the sample mean x bar is equal to 286.2. Because we have a known population standard deviation, statistic is going to be a z-score. And because we now know the sample mean, the p-value we want is equal to the probability that x bar is greater than or equal to 286.2. If we take a look at the graph here on the right, notice how the population mean is in the middle of the normal distribution and then the sample mean of 286.2 is on the right. The area shaded to the right of 286.2 is equal to the p-value, which again is equal to the probability that x bar is greater than or equal to 286.2. And now let's find the z-score and the p-value, again using the TID4. And we'll actually do this two ways, once using the stats option and once using the data option. So going back to the home screen, we press second mode and then press stat, right arrow to tests, press enter on z test. Let's first use the stats option, so we'll press the right arrow, enter. Most of the information is already here. If we press down, mu equals 275, which is correct, sigma equals 55, which is correct. Let's change x bar to our average value of 286.2, or the rounded value, enter n is 30, which is correct. We are testing to see whether mu is greater than 275, so we select the greater than inequality symbol, which has already been done. Arrow down to calculate, and press enter. We have a z-score of approximately 1.12, and a p-value of approximately 0 0.1323. Let's go ahead and record these. If we go back to the calculator just for a moment and press STAT, right over to tests, enter on Z test. This time let's go down to draw, keep everything the same, press enter. And notice how this gives us the graph of the normal distribution. It gives us the area that represents the p-value and below we have the z-score and the p-value. Let's go back to the stats menu, right arrow to tests, enter on z-test, 
And now let's select the data option by pressing the left arrow and then enter. Notice now it asks for the list and the frequency, which we already have as L1 and L2. Everything else remains the same. If we go down to calculate though, the results will be slightly different. This is because when we use the data option, it is going to use the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation. And now going back to our work, before we interpret the p-value, let's take a look at this z-score of 1.12. If we take a look at the z-score for alpha equals 0.025 for a right-tailed test, notice how the z-score is 1.96 and the rejection region is shaded to the right. Well, notice how the z-score of 1.12 is not in the rejection region and therefore we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. But before we conclude this, let's interpret the p-value and then compare it to alpha. The interpretation of the p-value is, if the null hypothesis is true, then there is a 0.1323 probability or a 13.23% chance that the football players can lift a mean weight of 286.2 pounds or more. Because a 13.23% chance is large enough, a mean weight lift of 286.2 pounds or more is not a rare event. So if we compare alpha and the p-value, notice how we have a high p-value compared to alpha, and looking at our shortcut rule here, if the p-value is high, the null must fly, mean we do not reject the null hypothesis, or more formally, since alpha is less than the p-value, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So our final conclusion is, at a 2.5% level of significance from the sample data, there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the true mean weight lifted is more than 275 pounds. I hope you found this helpful.